Hey guys, Mike Builds, welcome back. Today we're gonna be taking a look at one of these 48 volt battery equalizers. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing. I'm gonna explain to you guys how it works and how you would use it in your situation. Then we're actually gonna test it. So essentially what this device right here lets you do is it lets you take four individual 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries, put them in series to give you a 48 volt battery. And this will keep all four individual batteries balanced because they're all individual batteries. Each battery will have its own BMS. So the BMS within each battery will keep your cells equally balanced in that specific battery. But if you put these in series, there's not really a whole lot stopping this battery from becoming fully charged before this battery. And if that happens, these cells might hit their high voltage cutoff before these do, and it's gonna shut the battery off. And the battery pack you built to make 48 volts will never fully charge, and you'll just have tons of issues. So that's what this is trying to prevent, and we're gonna test and see how good it actually works. And I've actually been running one for some time, and it's this one right here. This one's made by Lie Time because in a previous video, I think sometime in December, we bought four of these, or actually three more of these 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries. I already had one that we reviewed. I bought three more to put in series to make a 14 kilowatt hour, 48 volt battery. I didn't want to have any balancing issues at all. So we connected that. And so far it seems to be working. I put a lot of power through that battery and using four 12 volt batteries to make a 48 volt battery generally is a lot cheaper than using like a server rack battery. It's also easier to build than a DIY pack, like this cow pack that we built. All right, so let's... I think I paid about $70 for this. I will leave a link in the description if you guys wanna go check it out, which is a little pricey. These are kind of expensive. And what I like about this one more than the one I'm already using is it has these little displays. I purposely picked one that has that and it also has a power button. Okay, according to this, it can do up to 10 amps of optimizing current. So I'm assuming that means it can transfer 10 amps from one battery to the other. It also tells you how you guys hook it up. So y'all see, we take our four 12 volt batteries and each one will be connected to one set of leads. So extra fuses. Here's what the unit looks like itself. It's pretty simple looking. The back of it, nothing really to see. Each lead has also an individual fuse for safety. I like that a lot and it just has normal ring terminals and these look like they'll be just fine. All right, so what we have here is four individual, also different brands, but just ignore that. 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries. What most people end up doing, and I've seen a lot of people do this and, the, and they also tell me about it in the comments, they will take one brand of battery and buy four of them because generally that's the cheapest way to get a bunch of capacity quickly, easily. Using these four separate batteries here, what I'm gonna do is wire these four batteries in series to make a 40 volt battery pack. We're gonna check the charge level of each battery with a multimeter and we're gonna connect our battery balancer and just kind of let it do its thing. And then we're gonna come back to it. I have no idea how long, maybe I'll give it like a couple days and we're gonna check each battery again to see if it actually equalized out the voltages. So first let's go ahead and check the voltage of each battery. 13.34, 12.4, this one definitely needs to be charged. 13.34. 13.35. Okay, so these are all actually pretty close except this one. This one's actually very low compared to the rest. So I guess what we're gonna do now is connect these all together, connect the battery optimizer and just let it do its thing and see if it can bring this battery up to 13.3 with the other batteries. Here's our makeshift 40 volt battery complete. So you would wire it just like this on your exact batteries at the house. Now we're gonna connect our equalizer. You literally just put them in order. So this will be battery number one, number two, number three, or number four, or number one, number two, it doesn't really matter. But you wanna have them somewhat in order. Nope, it powered on. All right, now we have all of our balance leads connected, all our batteries connected. This is just for testing. If I was gonna install this full time, this would all be way cleaner. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the battery equalizer with the power button. So you guys can see right there, that battery is reading the lowest. And that's it, I'm just gonna let this thing balance for a few days or a few hours or whatever it takes. And as soon as that battery gets balanced, I'm gonna bring you guys back and show you all the results. Let's go ahead and check this thing, see if the voltage actually came up at all, even just after a few minutes. It was at 12.4. Okay, now it's at 12.5, so it's definitely getting charged. It appears to be working. And according to this amp clamp, we're getting almost two amps of current flow. Though I don't know how much I trust this because the wire fits kind of loosely in there. All right guys, so it's been a few days with the balancer equalizer on these batteries right here. And if you guys remember when we started, the voltage on this battery, which is this one right here, was lower than the rest. And as you can see, they're almost all perfectly balanced, but I don't know how accurate the voltage display is on this it only has one extra digit after a decimal, so who knows? We're gonna go ahead and take our multimeter and verify all the voltages on all the batteries and see exactly how close they are. Now do keep in mind, because these batteries are just resting, 
The voltage may equalize pretty easily, but once you put a load on these, that's when they're gonna kind of separate. Also, when you actually fully charge these, the one that hits the full charge first is gonna have the highest voltage, and that would be the best time, I guess you could say, to actually equalize. Doing it this way at least shows that this unit actually is doing something, and it's not just a box with rocks in it or something. So let's go ahead and check the voltages. All right, hopefully you guys can kind of sort of see that, but I'll do my best to show it on camera. All right, battery number one. We have 13.32. Battery number two. We have 13.22, so just a little bit off, but I think we started at 12.4, if I remember correctly. Battery number three, 3.31, and battery number four, 3.33. So this battery is still reading about 13.2, even though it says 13.3 on the display right here. So there is a little bit of a discrepancy, but I didn't expect this to be 100% accurate. However, it is showing that this battery did actually take some sort of a charge. So I'm curious if I left this go for maybe a few more days, would it actually catch up? Ideally, if you were gonna set this kind of battery bank up, you would actually top balance all these in parallel first. That way they're starting out as close to equal as possible and that this thing doesn't actually have to put in a ton of legwork. You don't really wanna have to rely on this. This is just more or less to keep them in check once you top balance all the cells and everything's kind of good. So there you have it. That was just my little demo video of this Mazava battery equalizer. The next time you guys see this battery equalizer with these four batteries is going to be a video I'm working on right now where I'm going to convert my golf cart to lithium using this equalizer, using these four completely different brand of 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. We're actually going to be pulling all these lead acid batteries out of this golf cart and just trying out the lithium to see if we can do a very budget lithium battery conversion. I've already installed a current shunt. That way we can monitor the current and I've already been filming that video. So I'm working on that right now. And that was kind of the whole reason I bought this. I really just wanted to try this out and I needed it for the golf cart project. So let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if you guys are using an equalizer, if you're using four different batteries in your setup, maybe for solar, maybe for a golf cart, anything like that where you need 48 volts, but you only want to use 12 volt batteries. I think a lot of people do it and I hear a lot of people have success doing it. I think this will just make it a little bit safer. But thanks for watching you guys. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I'll see y'all in the next one. Hey guys, real quick, I'm actually adding this at the end of the video after the fact. I actually just finished converting the golf cart over to lithium and that's where I'm actually going to be using this equalizer. But one thing I want to warn you guys about is even with the display turned off like that, there is still power going through this. So basically what I was doing was whenever I was hooking this up, I had this battery connected, the second set of leads I was connecting and they actually touched. And what happened is they got really hot really, really fast. And I hope I didn't smoke this thing. It looks like it's still working just fine. But just be very careful whenever the second you connect a set of leads to any input on this thing, the rest of the leads will be live and the unit will start to try to balance. It's actually going to push current to that other set of wires. So if those touch in any form or fashion, you will create a short circuit. So please be really careful with that, you guys. I think in the future, I'm actually going to add some XT60 connectors to this thing. That way you can throw the whole harness on, get everything connected first, and then one by one connect them safely. In my opinion, that would be way safer. It is nice that these have fuses that does add a layer of safety and the fuse did not pop when it shorted out, but I just wanted to let you guys know that that will happen. So just be really careful. And it even tells you right here, don't let them touch. I figured if this thing was off like this, it just turns the whole box off. But all that does is turn the display off in order for this to use less power. So be careful using this at home, guys. Other than that, I think it's a great product. I'm going to continue using it on the golf cart and we'll see how it does.